Welcome back to Life's Chillant. My name is Avital and this week's Parsha is Parsha Yitro, which is a really exciting Parsha. This Parsha Yitro covers two stories primarily. It covers the story of Yitro, who was Moses' father-in-law and his joining the Israelites, the Jewish people. And it covers the story of the Jewish people preparing to and then finally receiving the Ten Commandments from God. Um, it's a very action-filled Parsha, and I, it's always been one that I really enjoy. But when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, I thought, how could I bridge the two topics? Because nothing in the Torah is accidental. No two stories or ideas are next to each other just by coincidence. So how can we relate the story of Yitro to that of the Ten Commandments? So with that, I'll get into the video. So first, beginning with Yitro's story. Yitro, again, Moses' father-in-law, he decided to join the Jewish people and to come and see everything after hearing about all of the great things that God did for the Jewish people. So he comes to see Moses, and Moses greets him, and they go into Moses' tent and sort of start talking business. They start talking about all of the great things that God has done and the miracles he's performed for the Jewish people on, from their exodus in Egypt and splitting of the sea, and now their arrival in the desert and um, all of the wonderful things God has done. And when Yitro hears all these beautiful things, he's so excited and he realizes that Hashem, God, he is the one true God. And so he decides in order to celebrate this, he's going to make a feast. And the Torah tells us that he invites Aaron, which is Moses' brother, and he invites the elders of the Jewish people to this feast. But the Torah fails to mention where was Moses. Was Moses there at this feast? And so because the Torah doesn't say Moses in this list of people who was at the feast, we're left to assume that Moses wasn't there. So Rabbi David Foreman, I've talked about him before, he has these great Parsha commentary books. In his commentary on Parsha Yitro, he, he plays this game he calls, Where is Moses? And when we read the verse and we're trying to figure out where is Moses during this feast and why wasn't Moses there? Why, what was Moses doing that was so important that he couldn't be at this feast his father-in-law was throwing in order to celebrate recognition of God and the beautiful things God has given him? And so what Rabbi Foreman suggests is that the answer to that might be in the very next verse. After talking about the feast, this is what the Torah tells us. It says, It was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning until evening. So he was presumably too busy judging the people in order to, um, in order to be there, in order to be at this feast. And Yitro, possibly picking up on this idea, he approaches Moses and he says, Why do you sit alone with the people standing by you from morning until evening? Yitro is trying to understand, like, why, it, what's so important about this that you can't take a break? So Moses explains that what he's doing all day is, again, he's judging the people. They'll come to him with questions. They'll come to him with disputes. They'll come to him whenever they need to understand what they're supposed to do in a situation. And Moses, using all the knowledge that God has given him and the ways in which God has instructed him to act, Moses will then give them advice. He'll tell the people what to do, and he spends all day long doing this. That's his full-time job, day and night. So after Yitro hears this, and here's what Moses is spending his time doing, Yitro says, The thing you do is not good. You will surely become worn out, you as well as this people with you. For this matter is too hard for you. You will not be able to do it alone. So Yitro is telling Moses that this is not a good idea. You're going to burn out. And then Yitro tells Moses that a solution to this, the idea that Yitro came up with, is that Moses should appoint leaders over the people, sort of create this system where Moses will instruct the leaders about what are the laws that God has taught him, what are the right responses in certain situations, and that these leaders over the Jewish people will have that direct interaction. The people will come to these leaders. And only if these leaders are not able to answer the questions will the matter continue up in the, um, in the hierarchy to get to Moses. So that way, instead of Moses seeing all the cases, he's only going to see the ones that are most difficult to comprehend or the ones where the leaders have questions or have doubts, which is very smart. Yitro is teaching us the importance of not being overburdened, of giving of delegating to other people and and just the value in finding others and finding teammates and finding people who can help us in reaching our tasks and help us in accomplishing our goals so that it's not only us. And Yitro tells Moses that if he listens to his advice, 
Um, then, quote, you will be able to endure, and this entire people as well shall arrive at its destination in peace. And so Moses did just that. He took the advice of Yitro, he delegated these tasks to these leaders over the people, and that way he was able to focus on other important tasks. So how can we relate this idea? How can we relate this idea of that Yitro brings up to the Ten Commandments? You might say it relates to the commandment to honor your mother and your father because Yitro was Moses' father-in-law, and that's certainly possible. Or you might say it's a way of honoring God because um, Yitro was doing all these things and celebrating God and celebrating the good things that God did, and so maybe this is a way to honor God. And again, that certainly could be. But the one I really wanted to relate it to was the fourth commandment, which is to remember the Sabbath, to remember Shabbat. So the commandment reads, Six days you shall work and accomplish all your work, but the seventh day is Sabbath to Hashem, your God. You shall not do any work. And it continues, For in six days Hashem made the heavens and the earth, the sea it is, and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore Hashem blessed the Sabbath day, and he sanctified it. So God, who is the creator of the universe, God who made the world in six days and rested on the seventh, in the structure that he created the world, in the way that he did those six days and resting on the seventh, is demonstrating for us, is teaching us how to create this healthy work-life balance. God is saying, work six days, rest and reconnect to me, to the, your source, the creator, on the seventh day. He is showing us exactly how to have these healthy, um, this healthy balance in our life between our work and our relaxation, our restoration, our family lives. So there's a similarity between the Yitro story and this fourth commandment of Shabbat that I would like to point out. Yitro told Moses, if you look back at that quote, that if he, if he being Moses, heeded Yitro's, Yitro's advice, then Moses would be able to arrive at his destination in peace. Essentially, that if Moses was able to delegate these tasks, if Moses was able to find help, then he'd be able to turn his attention and turn his focus back to the important task of getting the Jewish people to the land of Israel safely. Moses had so many jobs, he was being pulled in so many directions, that to spend all day judging the people was not the best use of his time, and it was distracting him from that end goal of getting the Jewish people safely from Egypt to Israel, to the land of Canaan. And so... If Moses is able to delegate these tasks, again, he has a much better chance, a much better likelihood of arriving at his destination in peace. And similarly, in the fourth commandment, God says, and this is a quote, six days you shall work and accomplish all your work. Or basically that if we're following the structure of working six days and resting on the seventh, we're much more likely to actually be able to accomplish all of our work in those six days. If we're not feeling burnt out, if we're not feeling overwhelmed, if we have time to rest and to refresh and to reconnect to what's important, then we're much more likely on those other six days to be productive and to be getting our work done so that, because we're going to be more refreshed and we're not going to be overworked and constantly working. The stress I could, I can't even imagine what it would be like to work seven days in every single week. That's just working every single day without rest. That habitual seventh day of rest allows us to have the energy we need to work those other six days. So that's kind of why it says, six days you shall work and accomplish all of your work. You'll be able to, you'll have the strength to get everything you need to get done if you rest on the seventh day. So these are really powerful lessons between the story of Yitro and the story of the Shabbat, the, the commandment. Whether we are resting on Shabbat and getting refreshed from that, or whether we are able, um, like in the Yitro story, to delegate our tasks, to share our burden with others, to get support where we need it, to only focus on those tasks that are essential for us ourselves to complete when we're reaching out and getting that assistance. When we're not going to be burnt out, we're going to be able to be so productive and to accomplish so much. And it's that, it's again that important work-life balance. It's that importance of not only working and not only resting, but combining the two together that allows us to be so successful. So I hope we can learn that from Yitro and from these commandments and this beautiful Parsha that we had. And I hope you all have a wonderful week and a Shabbat Shalom. I look forward to speaking with you next time.